Best part about Mike Malone's offense, which ranks number one in the NBA, is that when the first action within any given playset doesn't work out, the free-flowing nature of the system allows for other outlets to naturally open up. This playset is titled Push Exit, aimed to get Jokic a clear post-entry at the elbow, initiated by KCP's cross screen. Looney and Kaminga stop the first action by cutting off the passing lane, but Caldwell Pope then just swiftly pops out to the top of the key. Kaminga's over-aggressive stunt catches him out of position, opening up a clear lane. Nikola Jokic posted his 17th triple-double of the season, and he recorded it with his 11th dime midway through not the last quarter of play, but midway through just the third quarter of play. That was an I'm him type showing from Jokic considering the hefty amount of casuals that claim triple doubles to be stat padded. This triple double was legit. Stay tuned for how the soon to be three time MVP and the Nugs took care of business against Golden State. Just 13.8% of this channel's audience is subscribed, so please subscribe for the YouTube algorithm. Leave a like on this video as well. Lastly, follow at DFlowHoops on Instagram and Twitter so you know everything going on with the NBA and this channel. The offensive versatility of Nikola Jokic continues to be astounding. I know Joker's been averaging a 25, 10, and 11 triple-double for a while now, but 22 point, 16 dime, and 14 board nights are nevertheless appreciable. He just posted that stat line against Golden State. While Draymond's absence for the Warriors was noteworthy, of course, that's still not much of an excuse considering the fact that Denver was without their third best player, Aaron Gordon. Contavious Caldwell Pope's screen navigation, in terms of his ability to pinwheel around down, stagger, flare, drag, or wide pin down screens isn't the only factor that's made the 29-year-old former All-American out of Georgia the most under-talked about trade pickup from 2022's offseason. Legitimately making KCP that would primarily be the fact that he's first in three-point percentage among all 450 players on a decent volume of four of those triples attempted per night. Regarding the other role players, as he's done all year against Golden State, rookie Christian Brown provided clamping perimeter activity and timely distance three-point shooting. While Brown's wingspan isn't anything to write home about, the Kansas product has an above average for a shooting guard, six foot seven, 218 pound frame overall. He can either be the role man or the ball handler in pick and rolls. Early on in this man's pro career, he's been resembling one of the top steals from 2022's draft. Next role player we'll break down is for some reason, someone who in any of the Nuggets videos I've posted this year hasn't been mentioned. Vladko Chonchar is a swiftly moving combo forward, meaning he can play positions three through five. Vlad's a capable bench weapon who can both effectively shoot threes and post up. He's got passing chops as well, averaging three assists per 36 minutes, which isn't bad for a power forward at all. Chanchar's 17 points against the Warriors were momentum shifting buckets. Vlad was a game's second best, only behind Jokic, plus 23. Chanchar drained three of his four triples on the night and defensively also snatched two steals. When he struggled with his shot in his first two years with the Nuggets, given Vladko's locker room presence, the Nuggets admirably stuck with him, and now the 49th overall pick from 2017 is coming around and been a real bench contributor. You'd love to see that patience from Denver's front office. The Mile High City just watched their number one seeded ball club send an undeniable message. The Nugs posted the second highest scoring run of their dominant season, as their 16-0 third quarter merciless scoring run was only behind their 19-0 run against the Clippers as their best spurt of basketball all year. You could tell the Nuggets had a bone to pick and taught a very different Warriors team from last year in terms of their role players, how to close out games, and protect a lead professionally. Thursday night saw Denver display they're a first-class playoff opponent and that they're going to be just about impossible to win four games out of seven against in April, May, and June. With a beatdown of the four-time champs in convincing fashion by the feisty top-seeded Nugs, the changing of the guard in the Western Conference could be sneaking up on us. This is a powerhouse Denver system and first-class franchise from their front office down to the coaching staff. If we didn't learn that when the Nuggets went to the West Finals, the basketball world's for damn sure learning Denver's legit now after what they did Thursday. The Nuggets' severely under-talked about front office consists of President Josh Kroenke and GM Calvin Booth. The sound coaching staff fueled by Mike Malone consists of elite assistants and former head coach in Minnesota, Ryan Saunders, former 12-year pro in the 90s and early thousands, Popeye Jones, among many other vibe-contributing assistants who've got to continue to keep this team's headspace in the right spot on and off the court. In addition to showing this current Dubs roster how to close out games, Denver also taught the Dubs what it means to have legit depth. 
a man with literally the heart of a champion in Jeff Green, considering he went through heart surgery and was miraculously able to return to the league back in his Boston days, gives you solid minutes as a two-way wing reserve. Green's thrown back the clock, by the way, with massive Uncle Jeff patented posters at times this year. Overwhelmingly, in addition to the two-way impact of Jeff and Contavious, Bruce Brown Jr. was really causing Golden State problems, either with his elusive attacking of the basket or bombers from 22 plus feet. Denver's continuing to make teams quit, and by both forcing Kerr into giving Moody and Wiseman rare playing time, and forcing Kerr to wave the white flag in terms of taking Steph off with four minutes left in the game, taking the cautionary route on the second night of a back-to-back, -to, -back, to be fair, you could say Denver kept up with that old Nuggets video I made, and made the Warriors wave the white flag. In January, Mike Malone was the coach of the year, Nikola Jokic was the player of the month. The greatest roster in Nuggets history is now 20 games over 500, extending their first place Western Conference lead to now four games over the number two ranked Memphis Grizz. With just 30 games left, this is the best Denver's ever been throughout franchise history. They're an NBA best 24-4 at home, with those four losses coming by just one possession. As we looked at to start this video from an offensive standpoint, advanced multiple screening actions on and off the ball simultaneously help the Nuggets maintain a precise flow. Thumbs up for more play sets like the one in the intro to be broken down in future uploads. While it's important to have said play sets in your back pocket, the Nuggets don't have to necessarily rely on advanced actions to gain rhythm, however. Even if it's just a weak side pick and roll between the Joker Blue Arrow 1 2 punch, or Nikola Jokic just backing you down in the post, it's easy money for them or bloody hell for opponents either way. At full strength, the starting five of Jamal Murray, Contavious Caldwell-Pope, Michael Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon, and Nikola Jokic is a plus 153 together on the year, good enough to rank as the best five-man unit across the NBA. Are the Nuggets the early title favorite in your opinion? Pause to read these two commenter shoutouts from my last upload and this one. Competing community speaks with your take on today's question though. Thanks for watching.